Hi there, in today's video we're going to cover the career goal statement and its importance on the medical trainee CV or resume. I'm going to show you an example of what I mean by a career goal statement and how you can extract information from the rest of your CV to come up with a really good career goal statement. Hi there, I'm Anthony Llewellyn from Bad Med Bosses supported by Advanced Med. We make videos to support doctors in their career challenges. In today's video, we're going to look at an example of a career goal statement. Coming up to both annual medical recruitment time of the year here in Australia and New Zealand, as well as this is actually the time that most of the final year medical students in Australia and New Zealand having to put in their applications for internship. So most people are needing to submit some form of CV or resume, whether that be for an internship position. Um, most states in Australia and New Zealand uh, require you to submit a CV, CV or resume for that. There are a few exceptions, like in my own state of New South Wales, for most students you don't need to submit a CV, but actually in pretty much every other part of Australia and New Zealand you do. And of course, with the annual medical recruitment process, uh, CV and resume is vital and uh, that's coming up soon. For many states of Australia, applications open next month in June. So I've been doing a lot of work in helping trainees with this challenge about how to put together a CV. A lot of the people I work with, is students, trainees, etc., they've never really had to put together a CV or resume or job application or cover letter before. Certainly this process of applying for a job is a little unfamiliar for, for many people. Now granted, a lot of trainees have had a prior experience in something outside of medicine where they've had to actually compete for a job and kind of know a little bit more. And that's, that's maybe, you know, half or so of the medical students and trainees out there, but a lot have just still gone straight into medical school, come out of medical school into, tra into training, and now suddenly this is a real challenge. It's something that they haven't done before. So I talk a lot about the career goal statement and its importance its vitalness in a CV. And we've talked in other videos about what that is, but just briefly, the career goal statement, it's just your opportunity to pull together the other key elements of your CV to show what sort of job you're looking for, why you are the best candidate for that job, what you've done to get there. And it needs to be authentic and it needs to come across as punchy. So it really incorporates where your career goal aspirations are, and, and they can be a little bit more forward-linking than the current job you're going for. So for example, you might be wanting to do surgery, and you might be wanting to, let's say, uh, do orthopedics, and you're going for a general surgical SRMO role. So you can talk a little bit about that in, as your career goal in, in your CV, even though the job you're actually going for is a little bit a stepping stone to that. That's perfectly okay. Possibly not okay to get too far ahead of yourself. So for example, if you're a medical student and your ultimate ambition is to be a neurosurgeon, well, that's it's quite competitive to get into that. So you might want to talk about how your career goal is to get to the next level, which might be, you know, working in an area of procedural medicine. But as I said, a lot of people are struggling with this idea of the career goal summary. So to demonstrate that, uh, I'm going to use an example CV. It's a bit of a composite from a couple of students and trainees that I've been working with to help uh, refine their CVs. And we're going to use this as a bit of an example to talk about or show, demonstrate what I'm talking about in terms of how you can pull together a career goal statement. We're going to look at uh, how we can mine other parts of the CV to really come up with a a good, good career goal statement. So I'm using uh, an online CV resume builder program called uh, Visual CV. I'll, I'll just show you um, the, the landing page for the website. There's, there's a number of them out, out there, but I kind of like this one. It's, uh, it's, it's got a free version that you can try out. And then for reasonably cheaply, 
and twelve dollars US a month, you can actually pay for the 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 premium version, which gives you a few other things like it takes away some of the branding, you get access to some additional templates, etc. So I'll, I'll show you that as well. But this is the landing page, visualcv.com. So when you log in, you get this dashboard, uh, you get the ability to add two CVs in the free version. So I'm showing you the free version. I will, during the course of these videos, probably upgrade and show you some of the features available in the free version. So you can see that I've got two CVs there loaded. There's the ability to add a cover letter as well. So you can construct a cover letter, I think, using some of the elements of your CV that you've designed in here. So it kind of integrates things. And this, this can be kind of a repository for your CV over time. And um, with the upgrade version, you can have different versions. So I talk a little bit about the tailoring of CVs for certain jobs. So this is a way of sort of keeping different CVs for different situations, which is kind of neat and handy. You can see you can get some stats. Now, I haven't got any stats because one of the things about this is sending your CV uh, in an online format and then you can see who's looked at it. So uh, that's kind of neat. Not sure how some of the annual medical recruitment and intern application systems would handle that, but there's, uh, there is the ability to uh, also generate a PDF. So that's okay. You can generate a PDF and you can send it in the sort of normal way as well. So you get a dashboard, you get stats, and you can upgrade here and there's your account, stats, logout, etc. So it's pretty pretty simple dashboard page there. And so one of the other things, and I, I won't demonstrate it today, but you can upload a CV from a Word document or you can actually import CV elements from LinkedIn and things like that. I've tried doing that. Um, it does bring in some information, but I found you have to kind of still tweak it and move it around a bit. So. Just, just a bit of a warning around that. So anyway, we're going to look at, log in here to this CV that I've, I've been developing based, as I said, on some CVs, which I've now, you know, made sure I de-identified and removed any sort of relationship. Used about three or four different trainees and students that are that I've been working with. So this is kind of a dummy CV, but it's based on sort of real information that people. Put together and you can see here we've got a, a visual editor so you can sort of click on things and you can see what as you go you can kind of see what you're adding in etc which is kind of handy and neat you can also have a basic editor which you kind of just can on the visual editor you can sort of move move things around a bit so we're using these up and down keys etc but the basic editor kind of gives you the opportunity to move things as well see there you can move that around and of course we have to make sure we get things in chronological order so that you can kind of see how those things are and you can get a preview version as well so you notice here some things have disappeared so in the visual and the basic editor there's kind of gaps for you know grayed out gaps for putting things so you could you could up the top here put a kind of little summary of yourself. This is where I would recommend putting your basic qualifications like your MBBS, etc. We might go into doing that. Um, we do want to get onto the career goal summary and I've put a little section there. So, But let, let's just actually just go through a preview of this CV because I'm going to use it for hopefully for a, a number of videos to show how you can do some enhancements here. So we've got Kate Jones, she's located in regional Australia. So, you know, a dummy phone number. And uh, so drmail.com does exist as a website, but it's one of those parks. I'm pretty sure you won't get an email if you go to that. But I remember we talk about having a professional sort of email address. Uni emails are good. Gmail's okay. Just it's more the this bit, the, you know, I'm bereft of ideas or something like that at drmail.com is not a, you know, a you know, joke sort of names attached to the domain name are, are not okay. Oh, so there's a gap for summary. We haven't got any sort of basic qualifications there. We've got work experience here. So that's good. That's in the right order. We need to fill in that career goal summary. Work experience coming before education. There's not a lot there though. And uh, so in a future video, I'm going to just show how you can pad that out a bit because um, so this is someone who's going for uh, a JMO job. Uh, we've got some education there again it's just kind of listing what's happening there and so again in another video I'll sort of show how you might be able to put a bit of a narrative uh, to some of that stuff 
Then we've got sort of a section on leadership and volunteer experience. You can see that you see up here that this person has sort of spent a fair bit of time living and working in a regional environment, went off to the city to uni for a little while, but then managed to get back to regional uni. Seems to have quite a bit of a passion for uh, rural health and, and, and things like anatomy and, and surgery seem to be coming out here. Um, and they go on, there's some awards and acknowledgements and also some papers that have been accepted for presentation and posters, etc. One on primary health, one on uh, hip fracture, uh, a bit of a teaching involved in ACRAM needs to fill in their referees. So, you know, like that's kind of a basic starter CV. It's obviously not finished. We can use this as a bit of a way of tweaking and, and showing how you can uh, can improve on things. So uh, just a couple of things to, to show you before we get into the career goal summary. So you've got some buttons up here where you can share your CV. So you can kind of list it on the web somewhere if you want to. So you can sort of come up with a... I believe you can sort of change your handle there. So Kate Jones, and I won't click click further on it because that'll actually set up a, a, an unlisted URL. There's a you can turn it into a PDF. So it downloads a PDF. Come up with a new thing in the browser there, which you can download. You will see on the basic version you have this um, branding there with a little link any just as a tip any sort of pdf editor these days you can pretty much remove that <laughs> if you if you want to and uh, i'm not sure what the licensing is around that so so i might just just check on that before you do do that it might be a requirement that you have to keep that there you can share your cv with people for feedback so they can look it up online as well and then you can so you can upgrade, etc. Oh, sorry, yeah. And then on the side here, we've got templates. So what that is, is you can see here, and again, I was talking about the upgrade. So there's a number of sort of templates here that you can have to upgrade to. And we might, we will, we will do that at a certain point because uh, I think it's worth checking them out. Uh, because you can see that they've got, a, what's that? Uh, 369, 12, 15, 18... 21, so you've got three free ones and 18 pro versions, and some of them look quite nice, maybe a bit over the top, some of them for, for medical training applications. Quite a few of them have photos on them, but I think you can remove the photo if you want. Um, so that's all good, so you can sort of change the look and feel. You can't actually, as far as I've worked out, no. There doesn't seem to be any way of just changing the fonts and things within the template that I've, I've come across. Uh, oh no, sorry, yeah, there you go. So we can um, we can change our fonts so we can get rid of all the serif. So we've got a few, not got a lot of choices there, but let's try, uh, let's try Roboto. I know that one doesn't have serifs. So we can see what that looks like. Uh, that actually does have serifs, sorry. Let's try another one. There we go. So there's a non-serif font, which I highly recommend for CVs. It just the, the little inflections that you get when you've, um, I'll just show you again on uh, one of the serif ones. They, they kind of are just distracting and particularly when it's printed out, it's a little bit, makes it a little bit harder to read and overcomplicated. So uh, these are the sort of, th if you can see my cursor there, the little flicks at the end that you, they're called serifs. So we'll just put that back to assistant. Okay, so you can change that. You can even change the font size if you want to. I'll put that back. You can see it kind of, it's quite dynamic. It changes things in line. There's section margins, etc. There's even a reset button. So that's good. You can put in page breaks. I think that just, yeah, so you can enter page breaks, but that's good for like if things are flowing over. And there's some other settings which we've looked at already, and that's your history. So that kind of, uh, I think you can go back on versions. So it gives a bit of a restore there as well, which is kind of nice. So if you make a mistake or you, you know, you don't like something, you want to go back. That's something that's handy as well. So it's a pretty cool, handy functions there. There's even a thing in here where you can, I think, pay for someone else to then review your CV. 
this is a, a CV builder for everyone. So it's not going to, you're not going to, if you do that, you're not going to get someone who necessarily knows the medical industry, particularly in Australia or New Zealand, but um, that's available too. Okay, so we're just going to tidy a few things up before we get into the career goal summary because I just uh, want to kind of show how things should build out. So we're in the visual editor now. So the things that we would want to recommend, so just in terms of personal details, first question is, should you put doctor? Given that you're probably likely to be junior to the other people interviewing, it's probably better to just go with your name, but you know, I don't think it, it matters too much. So you could have Dr. Kate Jones there. We've got our address. That really isn't as essential as the email and the phone number. That's what people need to contact you, so that's good. The other thing that's useful in these sort of personal details is your qualifications. So we can see down here that we've got an MBBS, and we might want to spell them out a little bit more uh, uh, eventually, but that'll be another video. We've got MBBS at a regional uni, uh, BMED Sci at a Sandstone University. We're assuming these are the correct titles. And a high school certificate. That doesn't necessarily need to go up here. So what we would put down is, um, you normally put the first, we, you, by convention you put your first qualification. So we're going to put bmed.sci. Now some people will include the institution. So that might be sensed you and then a comma and then you've got MB B S. I'm sorry that was uh, and so you could include the physiology there. And then we've got MBBS uh, uh, Regional U, okay, or something like that. Obviously, I've made up fake universities, so um, you know that might be UNSW for University of New South Wales, for example. I don't really like the look of that. I think it's probably better to be even a little bit briefer. So we might just put in the physiology instead and leave it with the uh, MBBS. So that kind of shows the basic qualification. So that, from a reviewer point of view, you kind of get the basis. This person's a doctor. You know, we we um, we know that now. So the other thing we recommend, obviously, is is to add in your medical registration number. So now with this, you this section you only get one line. So. We might just pad that up. Uh, so that would normally be med, uh, and then there's an APRA number. Yes, and then there's a, so all um, medical registration numbers so start with med, and then there's a 10 digit number. And I know from looking at the APRA website earlier on today that this particular number does not, is not assigned to anyone on medicine or, or nursing. So I'm just gonna put that down. So there's some basic details. Okay, so career goal summary. So the first thing is, obviously this goes next in, in your CV after all these personal details. Now, sometimes you see people do this personal summary. They might say personal statement, something like that. But that's okay, and sometimes that works, particularly when you're going for a range of jobs where it's just not a good idea to kind of tailor your career goal to a certain area where it might be off-putting to s some other panels, particularly if you're thinking, uh, you, you know, there's a range of things that you want to apply for. But in, in, in general, I do encourage you to either put something like career goal summary or career objective statement so that's fine now we now need to think a little bit about what to put here now we obviously don't know just from reading the CV about what dr. Kate Jones's next 
step in medicine is or where they're thinking they're heading. So let me fill that in a little bit for you. As you can see from your from reviewing the CV, Kate has spent a lot of time in regional Australia. Uh, actually was born and bred in a certain part of the country where Kate's managed to actually spend a lot of her time schooling and university wise learning how to be a doctor. Um, so she, she was high schooled in that region. She went off to the city for a little bit to do a BMed Sci. And, and then managed to get into the clinical school of the medical school of the university in her region and then managed to get an internship in the same location. So that's what we call the rural training pipeline. So it wouldn't be surprising to you to know, given some of the other interests as well, that Kate does want to work in rural medicine. The other thing that possibly will come out, leap out to you, although it's a little bit more subtle here, is that Kate has an interest in surgery and in fact, wouldn't mind ultimately being a general surgeon in her region, um, particularly given that she knows that um, there's a lot of problems with access to general surgery and that's a real issue in her region. Problem there is often with some of these specialty training networks, it's very hard to train and study uh, as a surgeon in a regional area and you're often having to apply to a network where the hub tends to be somewhere in the city. So the question is, how do we put all that career desire um, into a statement which conveys to the person reviewing the CV that this, this person who's applying is firstly worth interviewing and secondly, so that's remembering that the CV is your entry point to the interview. It's it's most important thing is to get you into the interview. But secondly, the statement will probably be read by the interview panel if you do make it to that stage. So it also needs to be something that you can refer to and comes across as authentic at an interview. Yeah, if hopefully you are able to get to that point. So what Kate wants to convey here is that her career is to work as a rural general surgeon and wants to talk about what she's done to get there so far and what makes her a really good candidate. Now, one thing to emphasize here uh, on the other side of interview panels is that most interviewers, when they're in this situation where they're looking at candidates for specialty training, will these days be acutely honed and aware to the issue of rural training. So what, if you are a, a candidate that is applying for specialty training and you are really aiming for a career in rural medicine of whatever variety, what you, your main challenge is really to demonstrate that you're the real deal because there are some people that will try and sort of overinflate their you know, passion or desire or experience in rural medicine because it can be seen as an advantage. And, and sometimes there are even points allocated to this um, in certain um, programs. So you want to demonstrate that you're the real deal and you want to kind of make it a lay down for the panel to say, okay, we need to appoint this person because this person will fill a workforce gap that we know is a real problem. Uh, and more practically for us, this is a person who's probably going to be happy to do rural rotations, which generally in most programs can be difficult to, to fill slots in uh, when you've got trainees that are, you know, city trainees and mixing with regional and rural trainees. So as I said, remember, we, we want to look at bits of the CV that can sort of come into this career statement. What you say in your career statement should be backed up by the contents of your CV. So, so the first thing that leaves out, and we might just, I might just park this into, so we'll, um, we'll put this into preview mode for a sec so that I can look at it a little bit clearer and it's not distracting all the editing functions. So the first thing that's, that's obvious uh, in this CV is that Kate has been doing their internship in a regional location. 
And yes, we would probably want to put a bit more information about what she has been doing in that time. Bearing in mind, Kate is applying for this position. Probably what, what are we now? Five months in. So sometimes it's a little bit hard when you're an intern to sort of put down achievements when you've only done a couple of terms. But there are a few sort of little uh, highlights in the CV here. So the other thing is clearly Kate has done a lot of training regionally and has a, has a rural regional background as well. And has probably by virtue of the fact that she went off and did a BMed Sci first has had re really strived to get into medical school. So we can highlight that in the career goal statement as well. We can see also that she's doing some things that are proactive in terms of anatomy which, uh, you know, is, is a good thing to be doing uh, if you see your future career in surgery. And, and teaching others is also generally seen as a good thing by most interview panels. There's some leadership here in terms of chairing the Rural Health Club and being on the John Flynn Advisory Committee and also some outreach to rural high schools. So, you know, already there's some authenticity about this, this idea that Kate... Uh, is someone who is from a rural area, you know, is based on the evidence, is if given a chance, is likely to practice in medicine in a rural area for a long time, which is, um, is important. And we've got a few other things here, down here, about credits for rural medicine, sort of scholarships. Probably quite a lot, actually, to put around the rural side, but... Also, a little publication here around a surgery as well and a teaching on the run certificate. And it would be good uh, if Kate had some referees, the one, at least one surgeon that would probably help. So let's have a go at sticking that into a career goal statement. So I'm just going to pop it into Visual Editor again. So now a career goal statements should be a story. They should be... It's a chance for you to actually talk in the first person. Uh, I find a lot of students and trainees get caught up in the idea that a CV or resume should just be a bullet point list of things that, that have happened. And look, for the second to third to fourth plus pages, that's actually probably okay. It's okay to move into list version. But I actually encourage you to treat the first page as a bit more of a story. Don't make it a, you know, a long essay without any structure. You still need these headings to guide the reader. But you know, use sentences. So Kate might say something like, and you want to make it, you know, you want to get to the point. So remembering she's an intern, general surgery is a bit far away still. She's probably going to be competing with the numbers. She might want to just talk a little bit more broadly about where she sees herself. So, so my career goal is to undertake further training so that I can enhance my skills um, in the areas of procedural medicine. Well, let's just actually say in the area of procedural medicine. Ultimately, I see myself as having a long career in rural surgical practice. So that's kind of making it clear to people that, that she's applying for jobs that have a focus around procedural medicine. So that doesn't have to just be surgery it can be things like obstetrics or critical care or emergency medicine and she's also making it quite clear that she she's one someone who's intending to stick in rural practice in australia now we need to justify that so you could put a statement in here like um, my cv demonstrates that i am body the con Concept of the rural training pipeline. So now we need to justify it. So you could put something along the lines of um, my CV demonstrates that I have 
a strong, strong commitment to rural communities and rural medicine. I am from a rural background and have driven to undertake as much of my studies as possible in a rural environment. In addition, I have sought out employment as a rural intern Outreach to local high schools to encourage other students like me to consider that a career in medicine is possible, as well as taking on advocacy roles and undertaking research uh, and taking roles for rural health and undertaking research on rural health topics. So I think that's probably enough on the rural side. What you're trying to get across here is that you are authentic here. The real deal is a long history of you being born in a rural area doing whatever you can to study work back in that location. Most people know that that means that you are likely to be the real deal as opposed to say someone who says on their CV, oh, and I did a really great, you know, clinical attachment for six weeks out in Tamworth and uh, all of a sudden the light bulb has gone on for me. But we now need to sort of also show that Kate's also been proactive around this surgery thing. In relation to procedural medicine, uh, I have uh, been able to manage my time as an intern so that I can also provide part-time tutelage to medical students in anatomy. So that's also showing that you teach as well as publications, um, as well as uh, research and publications in relation to surgery. Now, I mentioned referees. I'm going to uh, suggest that Kate has probably managed to identify a mentor in her local hospital which is always a good idea and actually often a little bit easier when you're in a smaller rural regional place. So I'm going to mention also then that I have also also sought out mentoring from Dr. Uh, Michael Green, a local surgical education supervisor, I'm not sure if that's an actual role, who uh, has guided me in um, completing some of the JDOCs, um, actually that's completing, um, guided me uh, as they got it and and assisted me in completing a large part of successfully of the JDOCs curriculum. And 
I have also familiarized myself with the basic requirements for So, 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 um, so surgery is entry into basic surgical training is a little bit complicated because there's a number of programs and there's this thing called SET. So what I'm going to say here is that uh, Kate has also familiarized herself with the requirements for entry into the various surgical education I'm just going to go over here to the set program, surgical education. And so here we are at the rack site and uh, here's the, uh, the booklet on set training. So it's always good to check that you've got the right terminology when you're putting your CVs together. Nothing will, well, there are other things, but one of the things that might upset uh, an interviewer who's a fellow of the college is if they read things that aren't put the right way. So it's always worth, worth checking with the documentation there. So surgical education and training program, programs uh, of the Royal Australasian College of Surgeons. Uh, and probably what we need to also do in the CV is then make sure that some of that stuff, as I said, it's important that your CV, ref your career goal statement reflects other things in your CV. So things that we ought to be listing in here is that Kate has actually enrolled with JDocs, which most people do now. If they're interested in a surgical career uh, and perhaps has done a, a few other sort of things like a, often there's a, um, they may have already invested in certain courses which are considered um, in, uh, counted towards uh, entry into RAC. So, uh, but let's, Let's just look at that again. I might just pop that into preview mode again. So my career goal is to undertake further training so that I can enhance my skills in the area of procedural medicine. Ultimately, I see myself as having a long career in rural surgical practice. My CV demonstrates I have a strong commitment to rural communities and rural medicine. I'm from a rural background and have striven to undertake as much of my studies as possible in a rural environment. So I'm reading this and I'm thinking, mm, that's actually a bit long. So uh, we want to do a little bit of editing down. So we've got, the, we've got the main thrust of what we want to do there, but I think we're probably repeating ourselves and we really want to try and get it uh, maybe down to at least two thirds of size. So let's just have another edit of that. So my career goal is to undertake further training. Uh, that's probably unnecessary uh, in the area of procedural medicine. Maybe just take the ultimately out there. We might just, being from a rural background, conducting much studies. We might just pull in um, contributing I think that's a good one to have an and researching and being an advocate for rural health and and contributing it's actually obvious that she's a rural intern so I'm just going to take that out I'm going to take that out I might do is actually structure my, this is a little bit so I might just put a there That's, and this is okay you can put spaces in fact lots of white space is actually quite good I have 
manage my time as an intern. So here we can actually put in uh, the rural intern again. So I doubled up on that uh, so that I was able to act a part time tutor in anatomy. as well as researching and publishing pay, um, in the surgical field. Um, I've also contracted Green as a mentor, and he has guided and assisted me in successfully completing a significant and I might just make this a final statement. Finally, I have familiarized myself the requirements of in, for entry into the various surgical education and training programs now that's that that statement is one of those sort of power statements that's that I'd encourage everyone to put down on their CV particularly if they're going for a sort of college level training position nothing's more frustrating than having someone at interview who doesn't actually understand the basic requirements of training. So that's a good one to sort of throw in there. You obviously then do want to actually have read up on them and it would not be good to be at the interview to be quizzed on it and have said that you know what the requirements are, but it's a good thing to throw in your CV. So I think, I think I'm, I'm uh, really happy, um, happier um, with that. You can see that if we now put that into preview mode, that's taking up probably, well, I've got the page, the page, um, the page breaks there, but I think in Visual Editor we get it. So, no, nope. preview, let's just pop it into PDF mode then. So we can see when we get this into the PDF that that's only taking up, what's that, maybe a third maybe more like a quarter of the front page, still plenty of room to put some good meaty stuff about your achievements in work and still have a little bit about your education possibly there. So getting all that vital important information on the front page. So that's the career goal statement. There's an example of one. Hope you're finding that useful. Please subscribe to this channel. Please give us thumbs up or thumbs down if what we're doing is what you want or not what you want. Um, if you do subscribe, turn on the notifications little bell so you're notified every time that we put out a new video. We're trying to do at least one a week. I'm managing to actually do sometimes a couple a week. At the moment I'm focusing on the more immediate needs for students and trainees, which is career stuff, job preparation, but I really am keen to still get back to that good boss, bad boss stuff as well. I uh, had a bit of interest from international doctors about how do I get a job in Australia. So again, depending on your feedback, happy to do things that help people. That's why we're here. So I would ask for some comments and some feedback and just let us know what you need to help you in your career. Now, if you do want to give Visual CV a go, um, I've got a little bit of a deal for you. They do have what's called an affiliate marketing program. So I'm going to paste the link to my affiliate link. What, I, what I'd suggest you do is register for uh, Visual CV using that link. And if you do want to give the premium version a go, you can do that for as little as $12 US per month. 
uh, email me your receipt and I will gladly give you a free voucher to the Make a Great Medical CV course. So that's a course that we normally sell for $200 for free just for giving Visual CV a try for uh, as little as $12 US per month. Thanks for now.